What up, everybody? This is your girl, Keish, host of the Relationship Handbook Live, and you're tuned in to my boy, T, on the What Up Doe Show. What up, doe? What up, doe? It's the What Up Doe Show. Show your commentary on sports, entertainment, and alternative news. Uh uh-uh. uh. I ain't say nothing like that. That ain't what y'all saying. Hey, it's the what up, Joe? The what up, Joe? The what up, Joe show. Yo, what up, Joe? It's your boy T. Wilson. I am live on a throwback Thursday morning, and you know what that means? That means we get some throwback beats today. You know, I like that. I can't wait for that. Anyway, I got a whole lot lined up today. It's going to be a full show today, but I only got one birthday, so let's go on and get that out the way. I have a happy birthday to Derek Below. What the deal is? So happy birthday to Derek Below. And uh, we ain't got a whole lot of time to waste because we got a whole lot to say. So let's go on and get this party started, y'all. I know I told him, remember this. We did a song to this. It was pretty funny. Yeah. I said you're working with them bags, yeah, them bags, yeah. I like the way you scan, yeah, them tags, yeah. I said to the line, girl, hard girl, paying for my food with a credit card, girl. Got a big can of corn, girl, bag that thing up. Whole head of lettuce, baby, bag that thing up. <laughs> I, I messed it up, but that, it went like that. It was kind of funny. Anyway, let's go on and get down to, to some stuff. What up, Joe's Sports? Uh, and Tiger Woods is taking another injury-induced leave of absence from the PGA Tour to work on his game with the hopes of being tournament-ready soon. The 14-time major champion and longtime uh, top-ranked player in the world released a statement through his official website explaining the circumstances behind his latest hiatus. The last two weeks uh, have been very disappointing to me, especially Tory. Because I never want to withdraw. Unfortunately, lately the injuries have made that happen too often and blah, 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 blah. Bottom line is, ever since that incident, you have not been able to get focused, Tiger Woods. You lost your edge, and instead of intimidating others, you are now intimidated. It was too good to be true to have the greatest golfer of all times be a black man. It was too good to be true to have the great Jack Nicholson's records taken down by a black man. No, instead the black man has been taken down by the white woman. That's what happens. Now the question arises, were you on roids? Your body is deteriorating before our eyes, Tiger Woods. I've never seen a golfer get so injury riddled time after time. It's golf for Christ's sakes. How the hell are you being injured? It's golf. The only reasonable explanation. Steroids. Anyone that knows me knows that I hate to admit it. I was and to an extent still am a huge Tiger Woods fan. I even had the hat. Okay, it was true. I bought the hat because the TW logo also stood for Tim Wilson, but I was still a Tiger Woods. If I didn't like Tiger, I still wouldn't have got it. That ain't the point. Now you're bringing up old shit. I'm still a fan, and it hurts 
to see how devastated your game and your body has become since that white woman whooped your ass with a golf club. The only reasonable explanation I can come up with are the steroids. You suck, you jackass. College basketball lost another legend yesterday, man. Um, Longtime UNLV men's basketball coach Jerry Tarkanian died at the age of 84. Talk to Shark took uh, the UNLV running Rebels to a great run in the early 90s. Uh, They won it all in 1990 with the help of uh, Southwest Detroit's own Anderson Hunt. What's up? What up, though, Anderson Hunt out there? I'm I'm sure he's listening. The homeboy from the hood. uh, He gave Southwest Detroit a shout out after the game. That was was memorable for all of us. Um, But uh, Jerry Tark took us on a wild ride there with UNLV for a while and um, true legendary, true legendary moments we had there with them, and uh, we're gonna miss you, Tark. And I want to give Tark his uh, moment of silence. Um, on another serious note, um. Former NBA forward Anthony Mason has reportedly suffered a heart attack and is fighting for his life. So make sure you guys, uh, please, by all means, keep Anthony Mason in your prayers uh, right now, if you uh, don't mind. That that was uh, he was a very tough guy and uh, in the game, and I was I was really shocked to hear about uh, his heart attack and. Um, I pray for his family and hope that all turns out well for Anthony Mason. And it is now time for an entertainment report with your boy, Buck Nutty. What up, though, entertainment? Where you at, Buck Nutty? What up, though? This is your boy, Buck Nutty, coming to you live with an entertainment report. Tensions between Diddy and Drake are still sky high after their Miami fight, and now Drake's longtime mentor is blasting Diddy, Suge Knight, Lil Wayne, and Birdman in a blistering diss track. rap a lot Records CEO Jay Prince recently recorded the cold-blooded warning, which he calls a courtesy call. On the track, Prince makes it clear Drizzy is family and adds Puffy feeling like he can put his hands on my family only opens the door for his family to be touched. You reap what you sow. Then he goes in on we. Birdman and Shug and leaves one final warning. If you mess with my family, bad news gonna beat you home. <laughs> Rick Ross wants to squash his legal beef with LMFAO, but he claims Red Foo is holding up talks by bossing around Sky Blue, just like he did when the group broke up, according to Rick anyway. Ross says he's trying to get everyone in the room to discuss settling the lawsuit he filed against LMFAO last year for allegedly lifting his lyrics in their hit party rock anthem, where the song says, Every day I'm shuffling. The meeting is set for later this month, but in the dock, Ross says Red Foo is keeping his old partner and nephew, Sky Blue, in the dark about to sit down. Further, Ross says Sky trashed his uncle in a deposition where he said the real reason LMFAO broke up was Red Foo's refusal to keep him in the loop. Ross is worried Red Foo is trying to cut Sky Blue out of whatever agreement they might reach in this case. He's demanding all parties attending the meeting in person. In other words, bring Sky Blue blue or we are through. LMFAO don't seem to be scared of Rick Ross though. They called him a fake thug, said he's a corrections officer pretending to be a thug and he can let it go or get his ass beat in court. I didn't see this beef coming, but I like it. <laughs> if you cruise around on a suspended license in a slick Maserati like ex loving Hip Hop Atlanta star Benzino, make sure you wear your damn seatbelt and don't have dope on you. Benzino was stopped by Atlanta cops simply for failing to buckle up, but then they found a pot stash in his ride and now Benzino has been hauled off to jail for the belt violation, suspended license, and possession of marijuana. <laughs> Rough Town Entertainment owner Renee Moore says he's doled out 190 grand to front a huge in vogue comeback in 2010 with members Cindy Heron, who she find? Terry Ellis, who 
but she's still fine. And Maxine Jones, well, she ain't so fine no more. That never happened. Four years later, Moore says they never toured or cut an album and signed with another label, Pyramid Records, in 2014. He believes they've cost him a fortune and wants both the group and Pyramid to cough up any potential money they cost him to the tune of well over a hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars? Is you smoking crack with Spirit G again? Man, you smoking more crack than Dino Red if you think those chicks were about to make anybody a hundred million dollars. Put the pipe down. Has the Suge Knight saga taken a twist or is Suge Knight dreaming? Suge Knight claims to have a video of the entire parking lot altercation that resulted in a man's death. He claims it shows someone holding a gun and pointing it ominously at Suge and that person is Clee Bone Sloan. Suge's people believe the video clearly shows the fight leading up to the fatal hit and run was an ambush. They claim you can clearly see a gun in Bone's hand and it looks like another person is also there holding a gun. In the video, after Suge runs over Bone and Terry Carter, someone walks over and takes the gun from Bone's hand and walks away with it. And based on the video and information, they now believe Carter was part of the ambush. If you recall, Carter supposedly set up the meeting for Suge to meet with Dre and even rode to the location with Suge. Now the video was shot by surveillance cameras in Tam's hamburger joint parking lot. Originally, the owner of Tam said that camera wasn't working, but apparently that was not the case. Law enforcement still believes the video will help their case against Suge, but Suge seems to see it a little differently. This might be Suge's final chapter, but it sure is getting damn good. <laughs> That's your entertainment report for today. This your boy Bug Nutty reporting to you live for the What Up Do Show. What Up Do? Bug News. Nutty, Bug Nutty, you had a long one today, man. You had a lot to say, Bug Nutty. I like it. I like it, man. I like it, dude. Anyway, in Hayward, California, which is right near San Francisco, a California town injected humor in the street signs to get motorists to pay more attention. The traffic signs installed in Hayward in January include 35. It's a speed limit, not a suggestion. Or, quote, unquote, downhill. Use eyes, brakes, and brain. And they also there's also one that say, heads up, cross the street. Then update Facebook. I kind of like that one. Anyway, um, the city spokesman, Frank Holland, told the Bay Area News, the idea is for people to do a little double take and then realize, oh, they want me to be careful on the hill. You know, this is right near San Francisco, right? Standard traffic signs often become white noise. We wanted to use humor to get people to take a second look and think. The signs were installed along Hayward Boulevard, which is locally notorious for drivers carelessly speeding downhill. We thought we could get more bang for our buck with education. If people like the signs, you can great to read the messages reach them. If they don't like the signs <laughs> and think they're corny, they still thought about it. Mm. How about that? That's what Holland said. All I can tell you, sir, is that he's gay. And if nothing else, those signs got you onto the What Up Do show. That's good news. What up? It's your boy Dino Red of the Red Rock Podcast Network. And you listen to my boy. T. Wilson of the What Up Though Show. You better tell somebody, baby. In Glasgow, Scotland, an amateur opera singer earned a standing ovation for his latest performance on his train ride home. William Boyle was traveling home on the Glasgow to Hamilton train when he decided to take inspiration from some fellow commuters who held a spontaneous frozen sing-along. However, instead of a Disney hit, Boyle belted out a selection from Giacomo Puccini's opera Turandot that was made famous by Luciano Pavarotti. Figaro! Figaro, Figaro, Figaro! Another passenger videoed the song, posting it to Facebook, and it went viral. Boyle has no classical training, just likes to sing the song at karaoke, and decided to belt it out on a train. Free Garo! 
Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. If I didn't care. In South Minnetonka, Minnesota, you might remember that from Purple Rain, the waters of Minnetonka, Lake Minnetonka. Police had to use a taser on a deer. That was a famous scene, by the way, in Purple Rain, because that's the scene where Apollonia showed those jugs. Now you remember it, don't you? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Police had to use a taser on a deer to subdue him for long enough to untangle his antlers from those of a deceased rival. South Minnetonka Police received a call about two deer with their antlers locked together in the woods near a residential area, and officers arrived to find one of the deer thrashing around in an attempt to free himself from the other buck, which was already dead. Officer John Wareham consulted with wildlife agencies before deciding to use the taser on the buck to prevent it from harming itself or others. Residents armed with miniature chainsaws quickly cut off one of the uh, living deer's antlers. Why not cut the dead deer's antlers? That might be painful. You don't know. Well, it was subdued, and it was able to run off into the woods after a few moments. Doesn't happen every day that you would taser a deer. But tasing niggers, that's normal. But a deer, that's rare. Culture from the dark side. He's a jackass. Seven thirty. Resisting arrest, eating dry ramen noodles, stalking my ex on Facebook. Yeah, I may need medicine. Blacker than chewed up tobacco. Go tough on your the seven thirty show. Available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Spreaker. Did y'all hear me take a deep breath? <laughs> In Merrimack, New Hampshire, police have issued an arrest warrant for the country's most famous groundhog for failing to disclose the extent of the lasting winter. Want it dead or alive? Punks of Tony Field. Warrant for his frickin' arrest. The Merrimack Police Department took to Facebook to vent its frustrations at Pennsylvania's Punks of Tony Field for leaving some crucial details out of his Groundhog Day weather forecast. The winter's lasting longer than you said, you damn groundhog. We gotta put your ass in jail. Give you the chair, buddy. Shock ya. We're gonna give you the shock treatment. We're gonna tase ya. Cut off your antlers. Oh, sir, the groundhog doesn't have antlers. Doesn't matter. We're gonna tape some to your head and then cut them off. The Tuesday Post warned civilians to steer clear of the armed and dangerous rodents. Puxatani Field. A suspected shoplifter in North Franklin Township, Pennsylvania, found himself at the mercy of a 74-year-old man who tackled the suspect and threatened to break his arm. Charlie Burton, 74, was selling uh, selling the pins he created from old bullets at the Washington County Sportsman Show when he spotted a disturbance near the food court. That man needs help. I better go take care of this. <laughs> I was getting, I was going to the food court to get something to eat, and I went over there, and there was this officer. He had a fella up against the counter there, and, and I saw he was in trouble. Burton told the What Up Do Show. Burton said he rushed over to help the security guard, since the security guard seemed a little meek, though he was young. I think the officer tripped him a little bit, so I just gave him a flip and put him down. Ugh. He kept hollering, you hurt my arm, you hurt my arm. He was hollering like a little bitch. I told him, well, you better quit fussing around and fighting, boy. I'll just break it. Police said Jonathan Fakit fled the mall's Macy's store, and he's a junior, too. Jonathan Fakit Jr., I know his daddy is proud. 
He's 29 and got his ass beat by a 74-year-old man in the mall and made the What Up Though show. Yo daddy gotta be proud. Got to be proud. Police said uh, he fled the mall's Macy's store with $200 worth of clothing stuffed into his jacket until he got his ass beat by Grandpa. Yo, that's all I got, man. I got to get out of here. I, I didn't last as long as I thought it would, but hey, it's What Up Joe, the What Up Joe, the What Up Joe show. Anyway, I got to give a big up to my man, Latone Hart. He hosts a show called The 730 Show, as you just heard a minute ago. Uh, his show can be heard on Spreaker.com, Stitcher.com, and iTunes. Great show, although he's a buster. And I also want to give a big up to Dino Red. Uh, he does a show called The Shiznit Show, and also a show called Hoopla. He's a buster, too, but... Great shows. I also want to give a big up to Lavinia. She be show enough. She does a show called Straight No Chaser. She's a lovely, and she does a great show. She also does a show called Just Thinking Out Loud with her cousin Bajetto Rising, who's also lovely, and they do a great show. They can all be heard on Stitcher.com. A big up to my man Murray Riley Jr. of the Sky Shot Radio Podcast, my girl Keish and Georgette of the Relationship Live uh, podcast on Blog Talk Radio. Also, big up to Gil Laurie of the Onyx Truth and Enrique Black of the Five Minutes Away podcast on Stitcher.com. That's all I got. I'm out of here like last year. Peace out. Press your crease out. Keep the police out while I bust this niece out. Peace. <laughs> Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. What up, dude? Hey, this is Spanky Hayes. You listening to the What Up Dope Show. <laughs>